Today's modification is going to be a big one, literally. I just installed this 10 inch head unit on my Toyota Tacoma. Hey guys, it's Chloe. Welcome back or welcome to my channel. As the title suggests and as you just saw in the previous clips, I replaced my factory radio with an aftermarket one from Stinger Off-Road. Now, there's quite a lot to get through in today's video because I'm sure you guys want to see all the features of this head unit, how the install is, my opinion of whether this upgraded head unit is worth it or not over the factory one, what features do you gain, and most importantly, what features do you lose with this aftermarket head unit? All of that fun stuff, and I'm gonna do my best to be as detailed, as picky, and go through every single aspect I can think of with this head unit. So, I will be timestamping this video in case you guys wanna jump around because I think it's gonna be quite a long one. As a quick overview, again, this head unit is from Stinger Off-Road, who, based on their website, it just looks like they make audio, stereo, infotainment systems, mostly for Jeep, but they just came out with this kit for the Toyota Tacoma. I did not, however, pick up this particular head unit from the Stinger Off-Road website. I actually picked it off of TacomaBeast.com after watching the video they posted on their channel all about this head unit, which, by the way, I have a discount code for Tacoma Beast. Now, I don't make any commission if you guys use that code, but of course, I'm gonna throw it out there to help you guys out if I can. I've ordered quite a few things for this Toyota Tacoma from Tacoma Beast besides this head unit, and I absolutely am super happy. I've had a great experience. They've got a good return policy, military discount, and they make it easy for your one-stop shop for everything Toyota Tacoma. But anyways, if you want to pick up this exact same head unit kit that I got from Tacoma Beast, I'll have a link down below in my description. But yeah, this head unit is a complete replacement for your factory and tune radio that is fully plug and play. It's for third gen Toyota Tacoma, so 2016 and up. It mounts in a way that retains the OEM look in your truck. It offers Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and a lot more. So if you're interested, keep on watching and let's jump right into the video. I'm going to go through some of the main features you get with this Stinger radio right now, but I'm also going to be going into more detail in the next section of this video when I compare and contrast my factory head unit with this one. But generally, this 10-inch touchscreen has a 1024 by 600 resolution. It's supposed to be anti-glare, although I just installed it and haven't driven much with it, but it seems to be pretty anti-glare. But anyways, before I just tap through some stuff, let me go over some of the controls. So first up, knobs. I really like how this one actually has a knob to control the volume rather than two separate buttons on either side. I'm so annoyed by aftermarket head units that don't at least have a knob for the volume. Like from an engineering perspective, I'm not sure what's so hard about adding potentiometers and it's so much nicer on the user end to have a knob in my opinion, but I digress. I'm just really happy that this radio has one. The knob also serves as a mute function. So if you're playing music, you can press the center of it to mute. The one thing I don't like, and perhaps it's because I haven't figured it out yet, is that there is no manual pause button for your music. So the mute button's okay if I need to, you know, make the music quiet or something, but I'd like it to be able to actually pause without me having to go into Bluetooth music or in CarPlay and actually hitting the pause button. I do like this physical home button a lot though. This takes you to the main screen on this Stinger head unit. And this mic button here activates Siri when I have CarPlay on. So let me plug in my phone so you guys can see. Hey Siri, what's up? Hi Chloe, how can I help? 
And speaking of microphones, this head unit does not utilize the stock microphone that sits above you on the driver's seat. So you actually have two options for microphones here. One, you can use the built-in internal mic, which is located right here. This is actually what I'm doing and it seems to work just fine. Or as you'll see, the Stinger kit has an external microphone that you can hook up. The quality of this internal mic alone seems to be okay for now, but I'll have to play around with it for quite some time to decide if I want to eventually install that external mic that the kit came with. Speaking of buttons and controls, what's great is that this head unit hooks up to your steering wheel controls. So I can up the volume. I can swap between songs using these buttons. I can activate Siri by holding this button down. And I can use this mode button to switch between modes on my head unit. One of my favorite things about this head unit is the camera app. So you actually have the ability to hook up four cameras, one of them being your stock rear view camera. Which, by the way, you can access anytime, even when you're driving. Now, I also have a front camera hooked up. I actually changed around my anytime camera mod. If you guys wanna check that video and see what I'm talking about, I'll have a link in the description down below. But basically, I rewired it so that it works with this head unit now. And when you press the front camera, it'll show this one. And what's nice about this now is you've got the 10 inch screen. So the output of your cameras is a lot easier to see. You can also add two other cameras, a left and a right. However, I don't have those hooked up, but that is going to be in the works. What I also like is this button right here, mute on reverse. So you can actually mute your music when you're backing up. And there's a lot of different settings you can have for the cameras. For example, if I didn't want to add a left and a right camera, instead I could have maybe one on my bed. And if I go back, you can see that that camera now is the bed camera instead of the right mirror. So pretty cool. There's a lot of other options you can do over here. There is a way to also trigger certain cameras using different buttons and switches. I haven't figured out how to do that yet and how to actually hook that up, but I really want to do that. I'd like to have like a manual override switch for my front camera so that I can easily do it without like tapping through the apps and then figuring out which camera to actually hit but that is for another video. Now I'm going to put my truck in ignition mode real quick without turning on the engine. Now I'm going to put my truck in reverse real quick. You can see that the rear camera turns on pretty quick. Also, if I turn my truck off and I turn the truck back on in ignition mode, even as the unit is booting and I put it in reverse, you can see the camera show up. So that is good because you don't wanna wait a long time while this thing is booting up, even though it only takes about, I don't know, 10 to 15 seconds or so. It's been a little bit inconsistent, but regardless, it's pretty quick. But sometimes when you wanna turn your truck on and just go, the backup camera function will be retained. What's also cool is if I turn my headlights on, the display gets a lot brighter and you can see these switches start to illuminate. And a fun little feature is that you can actually change the illumination color. So that's quite fun. And it looks like you can even make this pretty custom. Wow, I will have to play around with this for a while later on. Now, of course, one of the big reasons I got this thing was for Apple CarPlay. So you can connect your phone and get Apple CarPlay. I haven't had Apple CarPlay in my truck. This is pretty awesome. My old unit obviously didn't have Apple CarPlay, so this is a big plus for me. I'm not gonna go through and tab through all of these different apps because that's not what this video is about, but Apple CarPlay seems to work pretty well. If I disconnect my phone from CarPlay, connecting from your phone is actually pretty easy. It comes up pretty quickly. I'm gonna mute this to avoid getting demonetized. It's pretty responsive as well, and it's pretty quick. The connection is pretty solid. 
So that's pretty cool. There's a lot of new features you get that you don't get with the factory head unit. Now I'm going to tap through all of these apps in the next section of the video when I compare this radio to my factory one so that you basically can see certain apps compared to other apps on my factory radio. So if you want to see details of each of these apps, keep on watching. Overall, I like this larger size screen on this head unit. It also sits closer to you so it feels even bigger. The mount that comes with this head unit makes it look pretty OEM, pretty factory if you're asking me. There are a ton of features and I know I'm definitely missing some. So if you have any questions on anything that you'd like to see that you didn't see me do on this head unit, leave me a comment down below and I'll do my best to respond. I think a lot of people would argue that head units in vehicles nowadays are pretty important because they can actually control a lot of different features in your truck. So if you're like me and swapping out your factory head unit, for an aftermarket one, you want to make sure you're not losing any of those features, or at least not losing the features that you care about. Let's do a little bit of comparing and contrasting the stock head unit with the new Stinger one. And real quick, if you're wondering why your stock head unit doesn't look quite like this and you also have a third generation Toyota Tacoma, yours might look more like this. And that is because my truck is probably slightly older than yours. Even though we're swapping out my 2019 head unit today, these two versions differ a lot. So I'll also show clips of some of the 2020 and up head units so that those of you who have one can also get an idea of what differs between that and the Stinger head unit. Starting out with overall appearance and basics, the app screen varies quite a bit from unit to unit. Both radio apps are easy to use and seem to work well. They just have different interfaces. Both have Bluetooth music. The Entune has a few more options for repeating, shuffling, and selecting playlists and displaying album artwork, but I like the giant buttons on the Stinger screen because most of the time I'm just pausing and skipping ahead of my music and I don't need a lot of these extra controls. And let's be real, I'm gonna be using CarPlay for listening to music anyways. Something unique about the 2016 to 2019 factory head unit is that there's actually a CD slot. And of course, you don't have this with the Stinger head unit. Now, did I even use this? Occasionally, so it's not something I'm that sad about losing. To be perfectly honest with you guys, there aren't a lot of features on this 2016 to 2019 Tacoma factory head unit. On this apps page, like there's a bunch of these other apps that I've literally never used before. I mean, I've clicked through the maintenance tab before, but I've never actually filled this out and it doesn't look like the Toyota Service Center fills it out either. I've never used this call dealer button, this dealer info button. It's pretty insane to me that there's all these apps. Like I would never use Yelp on my truck when I can just use it on my phone to be honest with you. Same with stocks like why is this even here? I feel like these are just here as like an upsell at the dealership being like oh there are all these features and all these apps you could have in your truck so why not? I mean there is this fuel economy page where you can actually like see your average fuel economy. Apparently my truck also has Alexa which I've never used before. It's kind of cool that I can go in here and turn off the screen and have this custom screen image but on this particular head unit there really aren't like any controls that do a lot in the truck unlike the 2020 and up head unit I believe. For 2020 and up you have vehicle settings like climate, door lock, and light settings that you would lose, and some other stuff like park assist and valet mode. You would have to set your preferences for these settings before you remove this radio, because you couldn't readjust them later on without reinstalling this radio back on. Additionally, if you were to get the Stinger head unit instead of this one, you could keep your factory front, backup, and side cameras if your truck came with those, but if you have the 360 degree bird's eye view, you would lose that particular view as well with the new head unit. I think the apps on the Stinger are more useful than the random ones on my 2019 radio. I already showed you guys my camera app, but another one of my favorites is sound settings. There's a 15 band adjustable EQ along with time alignment. 
Some other stuff you can do is there's actually an HDMI app and behind the head unit there is an HDMI port that you can hook up. However, I think while you're driving it doesn't let you view this, but I don't have anything hooked up. There's also an AV in also on the back of the head unit, but I don't have anything hooked up to that. So overall with the Stinger, you get CarPlay if you don't have it already, which is a big plus for me, plus some cool apps like the camera and HDMI that I personally could actually see myself using over the random Yelp and stock apps that are on the factory head unit. However, if you're going from the Entune 3 2020 and up head unit, you lose some of those basic vehicle control features. Now I know this is getting really detailed, but I did a few tests like which unit boots up faster, which is more responsive, and how does your audio quality sound before and after you switch to the Stinger unit. So let's time both of the head units booting up to see which takes longer. The Stinger definitely takes longer to boot, which is a little annoying, but at least, again, the backup cam shows up when you get in reverse, regardless if it's still booting or not. I can tell in person that the quality of the Stinger display is much, much better, and here on camera you can see that the refresh rate is a lot worse on the stock Entune, even though you can't see that in person. In terms of responsiveness, I'd say they're pretty comparable. Apple CarPlay is both laggy on the Stinger and 2020 and up factory head unit when you're swiping around, but they're close to the same amount of lagginess, if that makes any sense. Now let's do an audio test so that we can see if there's a difference in sound when you swap head units. Now, this truck does not have the premium package, which means it does not have the JBL audio. It just has whatever the standard audio package is for these third gen Tacomas. Now I'm gonna do my best to stay consistent here. All four doors on my Tacoma are closed and we're basically gonna put everything in the middle, which is I think how it came stock. If I go to the sound settings, there are a lot more than how the factory head unit was, but these are all the factory settings. I didn't change anything. Out of the box with factory settings, the Stinger doesn't have as much bass as the Entune does, but you can adjust it to make it sound really, really close to it. I've been playing around with the settings on the Stinger for the last couple of days, and I've gotten my audio to sound pretty much the same as it was before. Overall though, the Stinger audio quality is good, but it's not like significantly better, but I will say it's nice that you can customize it to what you want your music to sound like. Would I recommend the Stinger Off-Road head unit? Well, long story short, it's an awesome head unit. It's got a lot of pros and it does have its cons, which I think I've covered a lot of in this video already. I'm really excited for having this and I wanna say that a big part of me really liking this is that the older gen Entune head unit really, really lacked features. Now I've got the CarPlay option to add even more cameras that integrate well into the head unit. I've got the larger screen, of course, and a screen that's closer to you. I've got HDMI and so much more that my factory Entune unit did not have. In terms of the user experience, I think it's really good. Not that the Entune UI is bad in my opinion, it just is kind of cluttered and I feel like the UI on the Stinger head unit is better organized. It's just a little easier to use in my opinion. However, I know a lot of you guys that watch my channel have 2020 and up Tacomas, which means from the factory you have the newer gen Entune head unit. 
that factory head unit has significantly more features than my factory head unit had. However, you do get the larger screen with the better resolution, which makes the camera show up so much better than the factory head unit does but you're gonna lose your door lock settings. So unless that's something that's kind of a forget and set thing for you, that might be something to think about. And then if you also have the 360 degree camera system where you have the bird's eye view, you're going to lose that as well with this Stinger head unit. Of course, I didn't have any of those features in my truck to begin with, so adding this new head unit gave me a lot more, so it was a win-win for me. But if you're a 2020 and up user and you have those features, those are some things you're going to lose if you upgrade to this head unit. I've only had this radio for one day, but from what I can tell, it's definitely an upgrade for me. I definitely recommend it, especially if you're coming from the old gen Entune like I was. So installing this head unit is actually not too difficult because again, it's all plug and play, but there are a lot of parts and pieces, so it can get confusing. And if you don't find this video helpful, if you're actually trying to follow along for the install, definitely check out the Tacoma Beast channel. He has a great video installing the exact same head unit. It's super clear, easy to follow, and I'll have it linked down below if you need extra resources. Okay, step one of this install is going to be to remove this center dash cover. So I have a plastic pry tool over here. I'm going to try to work my way around under it and you'll just hear it pop. And you can pull away slowly and safely and this whole piece will come out. Okay, so now we're over here on my workbench and we're gonna take the high 10 screen and place it in its mount carefully flip it over and install the four screws that came in the kit to secure the screen in place. Now we'll take the surround for the radio from our truck that we just took off and there are two mounting brackets that come in the Stinger kit. I'm going to be using the bigger one because that's the one that's appropriate for my trim level, but if you need to use the smaller one, use this one. You wanna make sure the arrow's pointed the right way so this way is up for me and also that the arrow is facing you. So drop that right in and now we're going to take our screen and you can see that on this plate there are two holes where the tabs basically go for the screen. Now I'm using these six provided screws to really secure the screen in place. Our radio is mounted. Now I'm gonna take the brains of the head unit, which is this guy right here. Then there are two mounting brackets. They're gonna mount just like this. Now there's four of these smaller silver screws that came in the integration and installation kit, and we're gonna use two on each side. Now I'm going to put the radio replacement interface, which is this black box, on top of the stinger brain. I'm going to secure it to these side brackets using the zip ties. Then according to the instructions, all the switches should actually be in the off position except for switch three. Now we're back in the truck and we're going to remove our factory radio. So I highly suggest you get a microfiber towel or really just any towel and set it on your shift knob over here because when we take this radio out, we don't wanna scratch it up or ruin the shift knob or anything. So it's just good to have one of these. To remove this radio, there are four 10 millimeter bolts. Then we should be able to just remove it and let it rest on the shift knob. Now, if you're like me and have any other modifications back here, like I have the Anytime Camera Mod, this is gonna get a little bit tricky because we're gonna have to basically separate that out. So what I've learned anytime I'm doing an install like this is to really just get my phone out and take as many pictures as I can. So now I'm attempting to basically separate out the anytime camera mod 
get this guy back to stock. I'm still gonna try to use the front camera from the Anytime kit, but the Anytime camera mod had like a relay and I just don't think it's gonna work with the new head unit. So that's why I'm putting this back to stock basically. So I didn't notice this, but there's a couple of connectors here that you don't need to remove in order to take this old head unit out. Now we're going to start on the wiring on our truck. So in your kit, you'll notice that there's these two big wiring harnesses, but you actually only need one. Now the reason you only need one is because there's an extra one in the kit since there are two different types of wiring harnesses in the Tacoma. So in my case, I think if you have the older gen Entune unit, you're gonna wanna go with this wiring harness, which has a bunch of white connectors. But if you have the newer Entune unit, which would be 2020 and above, you would go with this one, which has a gray and black connector on one side. So I'm gonna put this one aside cause I'm not gonna need it. And then I'm going to start plugging things into place. So on this side of the wiring harness, you're going to find a bunch of these connectors and they're going to connect into the radio replacement interface. And the good thing is all these are dummy proof. They only fit one way, so you can't plug them in incorrectly. Now, depending on if you have an amplifier or not, you're going to plug into one of these two. I don't, so I'm going to plug into this one right here where it says non-amplified audio output. Something else that I forgot to plug in at this point was this connector on the same harness to the other side of the radio replacement interface. I completely omitted this and when it was the end and I tried powering everything on and CarPlay and my volume and a bunch of other stuff didn't work, I realized it was because of this. So hopefully you don't make the same mistake. Now this connector over here, which is labeled 16 pin stinger radio is going to plug in to the brain right here. Now in the box that had the high 10 in it, you're gonna have this video input harness. So we're gonna take this out. This white connector at the end here is going to plug into the back of the brains. Now is the fun part where we're gonna basically connect a couple of these cables to each other. So now we're going to take this connector, which is labeled steering wheel control and plug that into the back of the brains. Now I'm going to plug in a couple of these RCA connectors to each other. So first I'm going to identify the one that says OEM camera, and I'm gonna plug it into the cable that says reverse camera in. I'm gonna take these aux audio connectors and plug them into their corresponding colors in the aux in. Next up, we have this power antenna adapter and this end is going to go into the receiver. And then this harness also has a blue wire coming out of it, which is going to get connected to a blue wire that says power antenna. Now I'm going to take the camera input harness, which also came in the high 10 box. You'll notice there's this pink wire that says speed send. This is going to connect to the corresponding pink wire, also labeled speed send, that's on the main harness. Then this end of the camera input harness is going to go on the back of the brains down here. Now in this kit, kind of like the two main harnesses, you're going to get two USB adapters. Now, if you have an older Entune like I do, you're gonna use the one with the gray connector at the end, but if you have a newer Entune, you're gonna use the one with the black connector at the end. You're gonna take your corresponding USB adapter and plug into the bottom USB port on the brains. Now, we are very close to being done here. I realize this looks like a mess, but we have a couple more harnesses to go. We're gonna take our video connector harness and plug that in. And this guy's gonna go down here. And then this power harness, which has the exact same connector on each side, so it doesn't matter which side you choose, is gonna plug into a little power port down here. Now these two harnesses are going to route to the front of the head unit, so I'm gonna do my best to kind of tuck them in under here. Now I've got two more wiring harnesses I'm going to plug into the factory harnesses 
on my truck before we actually connect the brains and the screen. So this black wiring harness that came in the kit is for satellite radio. We're going to connect it to the black OEM connector. Now I don't have the navigation card, but if I ever get one, I might as well just finish up the wiring for it. This is the GPS connector on the OEM harness. And this harness with the white end and blue end comes in the Stinger kit. And now we're ready to start plugging away. Okay, now it's time to just plug away. So I'm gonna do my best to show what goes where, but again, your connectors might look different than mine. A lot of this is really just going to be looking at the factory connectors and trying to match them up to the ones on the head unit. And then when we're done, we're just gonna hope everything works. And if it doesn't, well, that's part of DIY. Sometimes we mess up. I don't know if you guys remember, but I think in my Anytime camera install, I switched the camera outputs and it resulted in my front camera showing when I went in reverse. So we're just gonna do our best and hope for the best. So I'm gonna start with the blue GPS cable that we actually just plugged into our factory harness. This is going to go on the back of the brains. Then this OEM connector right here is going to plug into our antenna connector on our Stinger unit. Then you're going to look for your OEM harness that fits with your USB adapter coming out of the Stinger brains. Then coming out of my truck, I'm left with one, two, three, four OEM connectors. And I'm basically just going to locate the corresponding male ends coming out of the main harness that's connected to the Stinger brain. And again, the good thing is that you can't mess this up because all the connectors are unique. Last but certainly not least, I have this RCA connector coming out of my truck. Now you may not have this because I added this as part of my Anytime camera mod. This is basically the camera output cable of my front camera. Coming out of my Stinger head unit, there are three female and RCA connectors labeled camera two, three, and four. I'm going to plug this into camera two and assume that that is the front camera. I could be wrong, so I might have to replug that in, but we'll try that for now. So I did do a little bit of zip tying to somewhat tidy this up. I did my best to clean everything up and now we're going to put the brains into the truck. So there's surprisingly quite a bit of room back there. Now we're going to put those four 10 millimeter bolts back into place and that's going to secure the brains in. Now that's nice and secure. That's not going anywhere. I'm going to plug everything back into the screen, which are just those power. Then I'm gonna tuck the cables in a little bit because they're quite long. That looks like we can put our screen back on or a whole dash essentially. And there it is. So after playing around with this head unit and I've actually had it on my truck for over a day now and I got to drive with it, got a chance to actually use it while I'm driving. There are a couple things I want to show you when you first turn on the head unit that you might need to change around right after you do your install. So first up, if you don't have the external mic connected and you're using the internal mic to the head unit, you're going to want to make sure that that's enabled. So to do that, go to phone and change the microphone from external to internal. One good way to test your microphone would be to do so through Apple CarPlay. So you can attach a USB to lightning cable, plug in your phone, you'll see CarPlay comes right up. And if you touch the microphone button, Siri will pop up. Hey Siri. You can change Hey Siri in settings. Also, if for some reason your head unit is not working, not responding, maybe not booting up, whatever the case, if you need to reset it, this button on the far right here is actually the reset button. So you can take a pen, actually press that button in and it will reset the head unit. It'll still keep all your settings. So it's not like doing a factory reset, but it's kind of just like restarting the head unit. Thank you guys so much for checking out today's video. What do you guys think of this Stinger off-road head unit that replaces your factory 
and tune head unit. Again, I know there is a lot to a head unit, so I inevitably probably miss some stuff. And if you have any questions whatsoever, leave me a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer it. I'm super stoked on this radio and I just wanted to say thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you want to connect more with me, I have an Instagram. It is at Chloe Kuo and I post more on there in real time. Thank you again for watching and I hope I will see it in the next video. Bye guys.